Hi there. Today I would like to teach you how to find the x and the y-intercepts of the following rational function of too long to state it out. So what we're going to do first is whenever you're trying to find the x and y-intercepts of a function, uh, I want you to fully factor the rational function out. In other words, look at the numerator, see if you can factor that, look at the denominator, see if you can factor that, all right? And then we're going to see if there's any terms that we can cancel and kind of simplify it from there. All right, because sometimes it's a little deceiving. If factors will cancel, then it might not be exactly what we thought uh, would be the x and the y intercepts. All right, so first thing is to factor this. So can we factor this quadratic in the numerator? Of course. We're going to look to find two values that multiply to positive 7, but yet add to positive 8. And that's simply going to be x plus 7 and x then minus one, uh, what? Plus one. Okay, it's a little early, ladies and gentlemen. So a positive seven and a positive one multiply to positive seven, but yet add to negative eight. So that's cool. Then we're gonna do the same trick on the bottom. You're gonna look here and you're gonna say, okay, I got a positive 30, and are there two numbers that multiply to positive 30, but yet add to positive 11? And there is, right? It's gonna be x plus five, x plus six. So positive 6, positive 5, multiply to positive 30, but yet they're going to add to positive 11. So that's cool. Okay, so now let me make this just a little bit neater. So I'm going to move that up. Now, um, once this is in fully factored form, I'm going to cancel any factors that are in common. Now it turns out that there aren't any in common. So basically, this step was, I guess, a waste of time. However, you can't really tell that when you look at the function. All right? So I would suggest always factoring it out to the fullest extent, and then if nothing cancels, okay, don't worry about it. It's not like it was all for naught, uh, because it'll help save us time in, in, uh, in a minute, all right? Uh, but there's nothing to cancel, so this is the function I'm working with. Now what you're going to do is now you're going to focus your attention on how to find the x-intercept and then the y-intercept. If, for example, let's just pretend that these two terms cancel, which they don't, then you would be left with the function of x plus 1 over x plus 5, and then this is what you would be using in your analysis moving forward. Okay? So, to find the x-intercept, what you're going to do is you're going to set the f of x equal to 0, and you're going to solve for x. All right? So where f of x is here, plug in a 0, and then write out the remaining function. So it's going to be x plus 7, x plus 1, all over then x plus 5, and x plus 6. Now you're going to solve this, okay? So basically, you know, if you, if you think about this, you're thinking about what values of x make this thing become 0. And you're focusing on the numerator values because that's going to, right? It, you can't have a 0 in the denominator anyway. Uh, that would lead an undefined result. So whenever a 0 is going to be in the numerator, uh, that's going to give you your... Uh, values of x that are going to produce an overall value of 0. What you can do, though, here is you can cross multiply, all right, and then you're going to take this denominator, multiply it by 0, but anything times 0 is what? Well, it's 0. So when you do this cross multiplication, it basically just, the denominator just basically disappears. Okay, so you're going to have 0 is equal to now x plus 7 and then x plus 1. And what you're going to do is now solve this. Now remember, since you have two factors, you can set each of them equal to zero in this case, x plus seven equals zero, and then you're gonna do x plus one equals zero, and then solve each of those. So x is gonna be equal to negative seven, and x is gonna be equal to negative one. So what this is telling us is that we're gonna have two locations where the function will cross the x-axis, and the coordinates of these points are gonna be negative seven comma zero, and negative one comma zero. Remember, the x-intercepts are always defined where the y value is 0, okay? And that's why when I plugged, that's why I'm plugging in 0 here for f of x, okay? Because that's really the y value. So those are the x-intercepts. Then you're going to do a similar analysis for the y-intercepts. Y-intercepts, what you're going to do is you're going to now set all of the x values in your function equal to 0, and then solve, solve for your f of x, okay? So leave it as f of x, and now everywhere you see x, plug in a zero. So it's gonna be zero plus seven, zero plus one, all over then, zero plus five, and then zero plus six. And now let's see what we got. So we got f of x here being equal to now seven times one, all over five times six. Okay, five times six. 
And what does that work out to be? Well, that works out to be about 7 over 30. So what's interesting here is that if you notice, what was this value? 7. What was this value? 30. Huh. Is that a coincidence? Well, not really. Okay. Uh, your uh, y-intercept here is going to be just the ratio of the non-x coefficients. Okay. So now let's see if this makes sense. We can always plug this on into the calculator. So go y equals, plug in the function, open parentheses, do x squared plus 8x uh, plus 7, close the parentheses, then divide it by, open those parentheses, x squared plus 11x, and then plus 30. All right, and let's see if we're kind of close here. Let's hit graph. Now let's bring this out, and we'll blow it up a little bit. Okay. All right, so what did we say? We said we had x-intercepts here at negative 7. Okay, so look, this is exactly negative 7, right? Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7. Negative 7. And then it looks like it crosses right here at negative uh, 1 as well. So that's what we said for the x-intercepts. And if we, I guess we, if we zoom in a little bit, let's go to zoom, hit 2, zoom in. Uh, now let me bring this on over. Okay. And it kind of does look like now, right, if we zoom in, here's that x-intercept at negative 1. But you see it's crossing that y-intercept. It's crossing that y-axis right here at, you know, some fraction. It's definitely less than half. And this would make sense, right? 7 over 30. Okay, 7 over 30. That's probably about 7 over 30 here. 7 over 30. Now, what we could do is we could use the calculator to help us out. We can go to second calc, do value. And then what you're going to do is hit, you're going to write x equals what? Well, 0, right? When I went over here and I plugged in 0 for the function, I'm going to now find what f of x should be. So if I come up back to the calculator, hit enter, look, it tells me the y value should be 0.23 repeating. Now you're like, well, is that 730th? I, I don't know. No worries. Go to your now calculator. Do 7 divided by 30. That's 3 divided by 30. Do 7 divided by 30. Just seeing if you're paying attention. And look, 0.23322. Okay. So everything works out. Everything makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And we have a whole channel dedicated to helping you through your classwork, not only in math, but chemistry, physics as well. We have a whole lot of stuff coming. And over time, we're going to leave you guys a lot of goodies down there in the description. So please check it out. We really, truly want to help you through your class. Take care.